VCY America presents Crosstalk, a nationwide call-in program discussing issues that have an effect on our families, our communities, our churches, our nation, and our world. Crosstalk, an opportunity for you to voice your concerns for biblical principles. And now live by satellite and around the world on the Internet at vcyamerica.org. Here is today's Crosstalk. Well, thank you and good afternoon. Good to have you with us on Crosstalk today. I had just gotten off out of the studio at TV 30 as I had hosted the 7 o'clock program and then got into the car and turned on the radio to pick up some of the early words of the presidential debate. And I'm totally convinced that, <clears throat> that there probably were 40 million people listening, uh, lots of people listening, wanting to know what was going to be said. And uh, it's interesting this morning hearing from, yes, even liberal sources making comments as to who they felt had won the debate. Well, <clears throat> it's talking about debates. It's not just winning a few points, but actually the debates are very revealing in sharing with us what and who our future leaders may be. And I thought today, because many of you are watching the debates, you have your opinions, your thoughts, and uh, we're going to open our phone lines immediately, right now, and so that you can call in and give us your response to the debate. There may be some of you that will say, well, it changed my mind, or it maybe caused me to think differently. Whatever it is, we are opening our phone lines right now. The number is 800 733 9829. You saw the debates, and uh, what stood out? What did you like about it? What you didn't like about it? I thought it was kind of interesting that they set the <clears throat> the agenda up for the debate to occur without applause. It wasn't uh, who scored the highest zingers. <laughs> it was, let's get to the facts. And I know it was probably restraining upon all those attending. But uh, it was interesting also as uh, they were given two minutes for the first uh, first segment of the debate, each of the speakers, and uh, immediately the president went way over two minutes in his comments. I don't know what time values are, are worth when you find uh, there are those who will go over. I'm sure that Mr. Romney may have gone over as well. But our phone lines are literally ringing. We've got one more open line here, and uh, the phones are open for your comments Regarding what you saw, now, we're not we're not going to talk about <clears throat> all kinds of different philosophies on this. You saw the debate. I mean, if you want to call and talk about something else, we'll have that some other time. But tonight, or I should say last night, the debate was there. Many of you saw it. Many of you uh, had thoughts about it. Many of you have, have thoughts about who is going to be the president. Some of you have thoughts about who you're going to vote for. Some of you have thoughts about the fact that your mind is made up. Whatever it is, this is an open forum today on Crosstalk. And uh, we urge you to uh, state your views, and uh, then uh, we don't have a lot of time for pontificating, but uh, we certainly will give it a try here. So the phone lines are open right now. We're going to go to Venice, Florida, and talk with Holly. Good afternoon, Holly. How are you? Oh, I'm fine, and thanks for having me on. You bet. Um, I didn't get to watch the entire debate. I kind of watched it during commercial breaks, I admit. <clears throat> but uh, what I noticed last night with Obama is he started talking about the economy, and he had this, you know, terrific plan, or at least it sounded terrific, about how he was going to be able to fix the economy. And I thought, well, he's been in there four years. If he had that plan all along, why did he not already use that plan? Mm -hmm. And that's just the thoughts I had on that. Okay, Holly, thank you. From... Uh Florida, we go to, um, let's see, Michigan. We're going to talk to Eugene. Eugene, you're on the air. Yeah, I just want to comment that I don't have TV, but I've been listening to the radio, and uh, I thought Mitt Romney did real well. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, actually Obama hasn't done much at all for this country. You know, I mean, I, I'm 69 and a half years old, and uh, what I gathered, I mean, he's just, he just milking the country dry, and that's all I have to say. Okay, thank you, Eugene. From that, we go to Mauston, Wisconsin, and talk to Mason. Mason in Mauston. Go ahead. Yes, I watched the debate, all of it, and mm -hmm. I thought uh, Mitt Romney did a uh, wonderful job. 
you could tell so by the president. Uh, he wouldn't eyeball it at all. He continually looked down at the podium, and you could see that he was squirmish, and he wanted to be any place but there. Well, they didn't. They didn't permit teleprompters. <laughs> you could tell that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much for your call and your comment. We'll take lots of calls today. Just a short comment, what your reaction was to the debates. Was there anything that stood out, anything that uh, caused you to have some thoughts? Uh, Some of you might say, well, in fact, we've heard already today in other media, some folks said, well, you know, I had some thoughts to reconsider what I'm going to do when I make the vote. (laughs) So let's go right now to Portage, Wisconsin. Got three open lines right now, 800-733-9829. And Portage, Robert, you are on the air. Thank you. I hope that this debate and what it resulted in last night proves to the voting public in America that Mr. Obama is nothing but a puppet on somebody else's string. Thank you. God bless, and have a good day. Okay, Robert. Thank you for your call from Portage, Wisconsin. And we do have open lines again. You can make your comments, whatever it is. Uh, we're not here to tell you one way or another. It's open forum today. And 800-733-9829. 800-733-9829. And our lines are jammed right now, but we'll take your calls as soon as you hear one terminate. Right now we're going to go to to Jen, who's up in Minnesota. Jen, your thoughts. I just want to call in and say what a great job Romney did yesterday, last night. And he was very prepared, and I think Obama had a hard time keeping up with knowing his facts. Hmm. Okay. Well, thank you, Jen. Thank you for your thoughts. And we go to Tom in Fort Scott, Kansas. And, Tom, you are on the air. Yes. How are you guys today? Just fine, sir. Excellent. <clears throat> Yeah, I watched the debate, and I thought it was very interesting that when 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 uh, Romney talked, Mr. Obama just kept on looking down, looking down all the time at the ground. Mm-hmm. And uh, when 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 Obama talked, Romney was looking up at the people. And I just thought that was very interesting. Probably studying reaction, wanting to see yeah. what people were saying. Yeah, sure. Okay, Tom. Thank you thank so much. And uh, we have uh, one open line right now. The others are all flashing and busy. Let's go to Ardell, who is in Minnesota. And Ardell, how are you today? I'm very good. What are your thoughts? You watched the debate last night? I actually was working, but I watched it recorded this morning. Okay. And I've always been told that you uh, watch people's nonverbals because they don't lie, generally. And so I was watching, and I put it on mute, so I didn't have to hear any voices. And I just watched the nonverbal communication, took assessment of how I felt about it. Mm -hmm. And generally, your gut feeling is correct. So I just generally look at one and see positive hope, and the other, I feel despair. So I'll leave it at that. Thank you very much, Ardell. Appreciate your call. What part of Minnesota are you calling from? Southern Minnesota. Okay. Thanks so much. Let's go to uh, Bayview, Wisconsin, and we're talking right now to Mike. Mike, you're on the air. Yeah. Hi, Vic. Um, I noticed that uh, every time President Obama got done, he tried to take another couple of extra jabs at Mitt Romney, and I thought that was very uh, very unsportsmanlike, you could say. And I think if uh, the next debate he has, uh, they ought to get Larry Pratt in there and uh, talk about that <laughs> Fast and Furious, and he might have this race. Very interesting. God bless you. Have a good day. Thank you, Mike. Let's go right now. We have one vacant line. We're going to go to Sioux Falls, South Dakota, and talk with Chris. Hi, Chris. How are you? Hi. I'm hello from South Dakota. Yes. How's the weather out there today? Oh, perfect. Great. It's a little cooler today, but we'll survive. <laughs> what were your thoughts? Did you watch the debate last night? Yeah, I watched the entire debate. Mm-hmm. I was really pleased. There was good substance uh, for a change. It was so refreshing uh, to hear some substance. And uh, I thought that Romney had the ability to connect with the people and their needs. And um, I'm making an appeal that we pray uh, that our churches will become more alive to what's going on 
uh, where church is not mortuaries, mm. and uh, that we can make an appeal to pray for the upcoming election and for the debates to come, and for Ryan also. Well, thank you. Thank you very, very much for calling us from Sioux Falls. You're welcome. God bless you. Bye-bye, Chris. And moving ahead, the phone numbers here, 800-733-9829. Hector on line number four. Hi, Hector. How are you? I'm pretty good. How are you doing, Vic? Fine, sir. Well, uh, my comment is about the debate. The debate uh, I watched last night, for the commentaries today, and everybody saw about how Romney won and everything. Uh, my uh, my view on it is the fact that uh, it looked choreographed. Everything looked so choreographed. I mean, the response, uh, the mannerism, the camera angles, and I believe that Justin Lino's Romney uh, for the next election. So uh, my thing is uh, I don't believe in the two-party system anymore, and it's because of those reasons. Uh, I think they're advancing the agenda, of a globalist agenda. I don't care which way you vote. That's what they're going to be advancing. And I believe Romney's going to win, uh, not because uh, we want to, because uh, somehow uh, they're going to make Obama fall under pressure. Mm. Um, this is going to happen uh, uh, in November uh, 6th in election. We, we're going to, America's going to vote for Romney uh, because of default. Uh, and that's my comment. All right, Hector, thank you so much for calling from Milwaukee. <clears throat> Let's go about 800 miles south here to Butler, Missouri, and talk with Dorothy. And Dorothy, you're on the air. Yes. Um, I was really eager to listen to the um, debate last night, mm -hmm. hoping um, to hear more particulars. I felt that they both did an awful lot of generalization, uh, pretty much as what we have heard in the past. And uh, I have already made up my, my mind. Um, I've, I know some have said that uh, Obama could have done something in the past four years, um, but it's the next four years that bring fear to me because sometimes it takes four years to get in and get settled and find what you want to do, and I don't like where he's going. Okay. Thank you, Dorothy. From Butler, Missouri, we go to uh, West Bend, Wisconsin. And Whitney, you are on the air. Hello, Whitney. Oh, yes. Hello. Mm -hmm. um, I just wanted to comment about the <clears throat> debates. I just wanted to say that I thought Mitt Romney was very respectful. He always called him Mr. President. Um, he was very respectful. And I think with the way that Obama was handling himself. I think he was very disrespectful um, to Mitt Romney saying um, that he was going to do a $5 trillion deficit. And I'm glad that Mitt Romney stood up and um, pretty much told him this is not my plan and really cleared things up for the American people. And, you know, um, um, she was saying that the next four years is what counts. You're absolutely right. But look at what he did in the last four years and, and the lies and the deceit that, um, that America has gone through. Um, so I'm just glad that Mitt Romney really cleared up, put the facts on the table, and was really respectful. Thank you very much. We're going to take a break. Thank you, Whitney. We'll be right back. Back to Genesis with Dr. John Morris, scientist with the Institute for Creation Research. Dr. Morris, even simple biological systems are really quite complex, aren't they? Right you are, Chris. Let me give you one example, the human eyelid. We might think that this is just a flap of skin, but it actually consists of four layers, each quite different and performing separate functions. The skin of the eyelid is much thinner than elsewhere on the face to allow for rapid movement. There's another layer that stiffens the lid for added protection. The margin of the eyelid contains the eyelashes, which trap foreign objects and take them away. The eyelid contains about 60 glands, which secrete oil, which combines with tears to form an important component in the tear liquid. Chris, we could go on and on. It's all so well designed. The idea that it could happen by natural selection frustrated Darwin and has frustrated everyone since. God created the eye, and he did so back in Genesis. For a free information packet on creation, please call 1-800-7-GENESIS.
And welcome back to Crosstalk, where today we've opened the phone lines and uh, would like to hear your thoughts on the debate, the debate between presidential candidates, which uh, November is coming around the corner. It's not that far away. So our phone lines right now are jammed. Uh, the number to call, though, as soon as and they're they're moving very quickly through here today. Our phone number is 800-733-9829, 800-733-9829. So get it on the line as soon as you hear it clear. And uh, right now we're going to go to Concord, New Hampshire, and talk with Frank. Frank, you are on the air. How are you? I'm good. How are you today? Just fine, sir. Yeah, I just wanted to comment. Uh, I'm still an undecided voter. Mm-hmm. But a couple things that I uh, was impressed by Governor Romney, uh, one thing that he mentioned was that our rights are endowed by our creator. Mm-hmm. That really makes me think of, you know, where he stands as far as that, you know, he believes in God. Um, the other thing is that he mentioned that we were going to have the strongest military in the world. I think that's really important, the way things are in the world today. And uh, I think that was a good thing uh, that he said. Uh, one thing as far as uh, President Obama, I did like the way he was looking straight into the camera and talking to the American people. And I'm hoping that Governor Romney will take a tip from that and try that as well, because I do. I am impressed by what he said, and I'm leaning his way after the debate. Um, so I'd like to see how the next two go. Thank you very much, Frank. Thanks for Thank calling you. from Concord, New Hampshire. Let's go to Illinois and talk with Dorothy in Illinois. Dorothy, what did you think? Well, I had the feeling that all of their questions had been written up before this ever got on the air. Someone else had decided what the questions would be asked, and so they didn't really have their freedom of really talking about what they'd like to talk about. I'm sure Romney would like to have asked about the gun running thing on gotten there. Well, my uh, my uh, understanding, that. Dorothy, is that uh, this is just one debate. There's two more coming. Well, do you suppose they're, they're going to do the same thing? I, I'm sure they will not do a repeat performance of what we saw last night. No, but what I meant was to plan what mm-hmm. questions they should ask so mm-hmm. that it would never be anything to exceptional happen to leave everybody mm-hmm. on a cliffhanger and leave everything kind of not knowing what to do, you know. Well, Dorothy, thank you. Thank you from Alney, Illinois. We move on to Jim, who's in the state of Georgia. Georgia, Jim, go ahead. Hey, Vic. Um, God bless you and be to our America. I um, just wanted to say that I, I think uh, Governor Romney won last night, and I really believe that our president has a hard time thinking with, without a teleprompter. Mm-hmm. Um, I really think he, he just has trouble because he just kept on repeating the um, the essence of the well with the five million five trillion in taxes we're we're going to do the five trillion in taxes and I th- I think Governor Romney just at least just blew him out of the water. Jim, there was one other thing that uh, was unique. I think there was an order at the very beginning that said no applause, no public response either way. Yeah, yeah. Was, I thought that was great too. It uh, you know the 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 uproar and the roar if you got. Uh, you know, uh, people in the audience who are all for one thing or another, the the big emotional response can even be shaping. But this was answer the questions. Oh yeah, and, yeah. Oh yeah, and plus, I mean, it'll it gives a person a little bit of more of, um, I guess, confidence when he might say something and somebody hollers out cheering for him. Mm-hmm. So. Well, anyway, I, God bless you and your your station. Yeah. Um, Jim, wh- where where, are you, where do you listen? listen? Where do you listen to us? How do you hear us? Uh, well, I'm, I was listening to you on uh, the Chattanooga station, but about a year and a half ago, um, the the it got um, changed over or mm-hmm. whatever. And now I got a smartphone, and so I'm listening to you through um, TuneIn Radio. This um, oh, that's radio. neat. Well, we do have that app. You just go in there, and it's free. People, okay, well, then I'll just go to that then. Now, now, you have a smartphone, so you must already be using it, right? Yes, sir. Okay, well, thank you so much. All right, buddy. Bye-bye bye now. Bye-bye, Take care. All right, thanks. We do have that app. If, it, if It's both for uh, iPhones as well as, uh, let's see, what's the other one? Uh, <laughs> you can You can go there to the App Store, and you don't have to pay anything for it. Just click on it, and you can listen on your on your iPhone. Or your Android. That was the word I was looking for. Okay, let's move right now to uh, Butler, Wisconsin. And uh, no, no, we're going to stay here in Howard's Grove. Howard's Grove has been waiting the longest, and Mike 
you are on the air. Go ahead. Hello, Mike. Hi, Vic. How are you? Fine, sir. Good. Uh, Vic, I watched the whole uh, debate last night, Mm -hmm. and I found uh, Mitt Romney to be uh, very articulate. He stayed uh, very focused. uh, He stayed on task. When uh, President uh, Obama tried to pin him down and make some of these false accusations against him, he he came right back, and he had very good answers. In fact, if you watched it, I think uh, uh, President Obama tried it two or three different times on the same issue, but he came right back at him. Uh, I think the American people got a chance to see a different uh, Mitt Romney than what the major media tries to uh, portray him to be. Well, it's interesting, even CNN and other groups that are known for their, well, we say favoring uh, of, of uh, a different party, uh, and uh, even they were admitting that uh, the weakness appeared to be, uh, and the strength appeared to be Romney, and uh, the weakness apparently was Obama in, yeah, in, even, in the debate. Even, mm-hmm. Yes, even even John Stewart, if you know, he's quite a character, mm-hmm. he even, he even uh, had to admit that, uh, that uh, Mitt Romney came out ahead. Thank you very much, Mike. Yeah. From Howard's, you, Howard's Grove, Wisconsin, we go to Butler, Wisconsin, and Inez. Inez, how are you? Okay. I wanted to say that I think the governor gave the president a lot of good ideas. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, you, it'll be interesting to watch, for sure. Yeah, well, right. Inez, thank you. Thank you. Butler, Wisconsin. Okay, got two open lines. One open line now, 800-733-9829. 800-733-9829. Let's go to Ronnie in Milwaukee. And, Ronnie, you're on the air. Hello, Ronnie. Hey, hello. How are you doing? Uh, praise God. I didn't get an opportunity to see the debate last night, but I'm hearing a whole lot about it. I just hope that Americans can remind themselves to pray before this election. I, I hear a lot about Romney doing great, and that's fine. But, you know, people got to understand he's a businessman. And, of course, when you're going into an arena to become president, you're going to put on a great acting job. And I just hope that he stick to the issues and have great plans to move America forward. Well, let me ask you a question. This has no connection now with any candidate, but it's just, let's say, if you had the chance to choose a candidate, one who was a great orator and could give good speeches, the other who was a businessman who knew how to run a business. Which would you be prone to vote for? Well, well, good business is always good. And also the other one that you had mentioned as well. If we can get both of them to be on that same agenda, we'll have a fantastic president. (laughs) But unfortunately, we got one that has the oral conversation and one that has the demeanor of a great speaker like Martin Luther King. But I think we were looking forward to this country moving forward and not just a drama of acting. Very good. Thank you, sir, for your comments, Ronnie. We appreciate that. We're going to go right on to, uh, let's see, we'll talk to Mark, who is in Kansas. And, Mark, what part of Kansas? I am from Lynn County, Kansas. So uh, I would be uh, west of the lady that called in from Butler. Okay. After a church in Butler. Great. Well, share with us your thoughts. Okay. Well, I would just say that... uh, Based on my observations, um, the president's never had a hardball question given to him. He's always protected by the media. And I would think it's amazing to think that countless millions and millions of people, undecided voters, would be watching this show, and he shows up totally unprepared. Mm. Uh, I will base my vote um, not on John 316, because we're not voting in a priest or we're not voting in a pastor. I will base my vote on Romans 13.1, and Romans 13.1 says that God has instituted human government to reward good and to restrain sin in our evil and fallen world. That's not a quote of 13.1, but that is the summation of 13.1 and verse 4 of chapter 13, and I wish people would read chapter 13, but verse 4 says that this man that's elected is God's minister to you for good. And the problem we're having today is there's so much evil that is going on. It is just absolutely uh, destroying our country. And I do believe that our country needs to repent. It has to begin with the churches. Mm. And I would like for an individual that's doing this to be a Christian. But I don't know of any Christians we've had in that office. Honestly, I do not believe 
uh, I, I've noticed any. Uh, George Bush even said we all serve the same God, and um, you know everybody talked about what a Christian he is. I would urge people to vote on Romans chapter 13, someone that can keep civility and bear the sword. I appreciate you, Vic. God bless you. Thank you, Mark. Appreciate the call. Moving right along to um, Josh in Waukesha, Wisconsin. And Josh, you're on the air, Josh. Hi, uh, I just want to thank the last caller for really focusing on uh, a true biblical outlook on how are we to decide what we're gonna, who we're going to vote for. Um, but I have two, two comments. First of all, I think Romney has Obama up against the ropes. Um, and regardless of what the media says, uh, is going to try and portray this as, uh, Obama's fighting a losing battle right now, lashing out like an injured lion. I think Romney just needs to stand on the points of uh, just exposing the, the, the liar that Obama is on so many different levels. And even just publicly in a debate like this, trying to bring out lies, I think Romney's comment about his, uh, his sons trying to repeat an issue over and over until uh, he believes it to be true, but he's, uh, he's got the better of Obama on that one. I just think uh, he just needs to keep bringing that kind of uh, fierceness towards uh, respectable fierceness, I guess. Uh, secondly, Obama wants to talk about the, uh, the deficit. Uh, you know what? All Romney really needs to do is point out, hey, um, trillions of dollars of our children's money. Thank you very much. Next issue, I'll do way better on the deficit than you ever would. <laughs> Thank you, and uh, praise God. Thank you, Josh, for your comments from Waukesha, Wisconsin. Uh, let's go to next. We're going to go to Pennsylvania, and uh, that's Jolene. How are you? Jolene, Hi. go ahead. Hi. I plan on voting for Governor Romney, and I realize that he is not a born-again Christian. But I do get on my knees every morning, and I ask God to open his eyes to the truth of the real Jesus of the Bible and to give him wisdom, because we do need someone in this country that we can have freedom of speech and religion, and he is the person. I would never vote for Barack Obama based on his stand on abortion and the homosexual marriage alone, and that's that's all I have to say. Thank Th- you. Thank you, Jolene. Appreciate the call from Pennsylvania. We go to Minnesota and talk with Lorraine. Lorraine, you're on the air. Hi. Um, I kept hearing Obama say that Romney has not told us how he's going to do his changes for improvements in government. Mm-hmm. However, in the past four years, Obama hasn't shown us he can make good changes in our government. And I'm just thankful that God is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Amen. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lorraine. That's uh, We've got two vacant lines if you want to get in very quickly, 800-733-9829. And we're going to go to Wisconsin Dells and talk with Guy. Guy, you're on the air. Hi, Vic. I, I love piano music. You need to play more Rudy Atwood. But I'd like <laughs> to say uh, the one thing, I'm not real fond of either uh, a candidate, but I would like to say uh, that uh, one thing Romney did say was, that Jerusalem was the capital of Israel. And I'd, I'd like to see him uh, get Obama to say that. Okay. Thank you very much, Guy, from Wisconsin Dells. We'll be right back right after this break. And uh, get online and call us your thoughts about what happened last night in the debates. This is Crosstalk. On a national level, the Secretary of Defense has warned of cyber terrorism and the devastation such an attack could bring. On a personal level, computers and the Internet continue to revolutionize the way we live. But is our increasing dependence on these technologies stealing our privacy and setting us up for a devastating fall? In the book Cyber Meltdown, biblical apologist Ron Rhodes addresses Bible prophecy and the imminent threat of cyber terrorism. He examines what a cyber attack in the U.S. would look like. What new technologies seem to be paving the way for fulfillment of end-times prophecies in the Bible? How terrorists and opposing nations are using cyberspace as a weapon? How computer viruses spread and personal privacy has been compromised? To obtain your copy of Cyber Meltdown, send a donation of $17 or more to VCY America, 3434 West Kilbourne Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 53208. To donate by phone, call 1-800-729-9829.
And welcome back to Crosstalk, where the phones are ringing like crazy here today. We've got uh, three of the four lines tied up, and uh, we're asking you, what was your reaction to the debate last night between presidential candidates or the president and his uh, opponent? And your thoughts today, very interesting, people sharing from all over the United States, and your call is most welcome as well. Right now, we're going to go to Brenda, who is in Valentine, Nebraska. And uh, Brenda, you're on the air. Uh, hi, Vic. Hi there. I, I just have a couple quick comments. Uh, the beginning of the debate started out with Mitt addressing the president, and he said, uh, um, thank you for being here, and, and sorry that you missed out on your anniversary. And the president never really responded about that at all. I've always kind of had a funny feeling about the president's relationship with his wife, and I'm always kind of concerned about his, quote, family um, attributes. The other comment that I wanted to make was that when um, President Obama told Mitt Romney that there is a actual tax break for the businesses that leave our country, and Mitt said, I've been in business 25 years, and I've never heard of that. Hmm. That kind of woke me up, and I was like, I think either the president's lying or he just doesn't know. Okay. Brenda. So those are my comments. Okay, from Valentine, Nebraska. Thank you, Brenda. Appreciate the call. And we move quickly, hundreds of miles north to Ashland, Wisconsin, and we're going to talk with Lat. And Lat, Lat, you're on the air. Hello? Yes, sir, you're on the air, Lat. Yeah, hi, Vic. I just want to, I watched the debate last night, and mm-hmm. I just want to emphasize that in the debate, you know, I believe that we have two non-Christians running for the, the most important um, position in America, mm-hmm. and maybe through this that God has allowed both of these men to be there, which I believe he has. And and through that, you know, our country is going the way of anti-God. And maybe through that, that, you know, we see our country being destroyed, that through this, God will get his His glory and justice. And maybe finally America will come back and, and repent of the sins that, it, that has fallen away from God so much. Lad, thank you so much. From Ashland, Wisconsin. Appreciate that. Moving along, you're sharing your thoughts today on Crosstalk, and uh, we're very grateful for your calls. Let's uh, move right now to Ironwood, Michigan, and talk with Norman. Norman, you're on the air. Yeah. Vic, you're doing a great job, but last night we had one of the greatest presidential debates that I, my wife, and all my friends that I have heard from and talked to have indicated that they felt just exactly the same. Hmm. And they said they were so excited because here we had a man who was not ashamed of our country. He was a man who believes in strong families, family values, pro-life, all that garbage that we have been hearing about for the last four years. He stands up and he unshamedly speaks about being... um, a constitutionalist, and and an American. And I think that we should all thank the Lord. Thank you. God bless you, Vic. Thank you, Norm. Thank you for that call. Yeah, you bet. Bye now. Let's go to South Dakota and Tiffany. Tiffany, standing by. Tiffany, what would you like to share? Um, Well, Romney said that he was going to turn health care down to all the 50 states individually and let it be a state issue and not federally um, run. So I think maybe that's why there's not a crystal clear answer on for his health care. Okay. So what was your thought about the debate? I thought Romney did really well. And, um, you know, I figured Obama was kind of trying to tell a bunch of stories about, you know, how this and that went about and, I thought that he was just trying to make everybody feel good with a story about his grandma and, you know, didn't really make a point. Okay. Well, thanks, Tiffany. Thanks for taking the time to call in. Thank you. Have a good day. You bet. That's from South Dakota. And uh, got an open line standing by right now. We'll go to Ripon, Wisconsin, and talk to Brian. Brian, you're on the air. Hi. I'm just uh, wanting to encourage everybody, you know, regardless of, of who ends up as president, whether it be Barack Obama or Mitt Romney, that we're, we're we as Christians that we're we're praying for both of them, their families, that they would both, both regardless who ends up back in office, that they would both um, come to see Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And as far as the the um, the debate last night, I thought Mitt Romney did a great job. 
Um, but I just, I think, boy, I tell you what, regardless of who gets in, let's, let's just remember them in our prayers. Amen. Well said, Brian. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well said. Moving right along to uh, Oconomowoc, and we're going to talk to Marge. Marge, you're on the air. Hi, Vic. Yes. I just wanted to say that I thought Mr. Romney did a good job, and uh, I liked the way he talked about the states being more control of of things than the federal government, Mm -hmm. and... I like the fact he brought up the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution, and I felt that President Obama seemed to be stuck on Obamacare, and I didn't think it was, well, he sort of made a smart remark at the end where he said, I think you're going to be very busy on the last day with Ob- just with Obamacare, and so that's that's what my take was on it. Marge, thank you. Thank mm-hmm. you from, uh, from Oconomowoc. Thanks so much. Okay, let's move on to Madison, Wisconsin, and talk with Terry. Terry, how are you today? I'm well. Uh, it, it, I just wanted to call and just, just to make this, uh, I think everybody's aware of this already, uh, that there is, uh, in the scriptures, it talks about uh, God ordaining rulers and uh and he ordains them and puts them in place. And that guy that was talking about Romans, uh, I believe he was absolutely correct. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was thinking about Saul and, and David, how the people wanted a king, and they asked for a king, and God gave them a king. So it makes me think that uh, it's even president, uh, fine, if God puts them in there to rule. Uh, my, my thing is, we, people are emphasize, putting emphasis on this word businessman, businessman, businessman. Almost every businessman I've ever known to be a great businessman, mm-hmm. the first thing they do, they have to trim down and cut and, 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 and cut, cut, cut. So I would pray that we be careful what we ask for because we just might get it. We might get a great businessman, but uh, in cutting, things might happen that we won't like. Uh, that's all I have to say. All right. Thank you, Terry. Uh, Thank you for calling us. Uh, we're going to move right on to Bob, who's in Wisconsin. Bob, your thoughts. Hello, Bob. You're on the air. Oh, hi. Uh, Vic, uh, I'm 89 years old. I listened and watched the uh, debate, but I'll confess it's very hard to follow the issues and the numbers and all those wild numbers they give. But I like to see what the pundits say after the debate, and I watch CNN and, of course, they all acknowledge that uh, Romney had won, but some of the liberal pundits wanted to make excuses for him. But my, my position is this, and I'm a born-again Christian. Uh, I'm going to vote for Romney not on the basis of his theology, but on the basis of his moral integrity. And uh, Graham, uh, uh, Billy Graham's son has an email out that uh, says the very same thing. He endorses Romney on the basis of of his moral integrity. Thank you, Vic, for uh, hearing me. Bye. Thank you, Bob. Appreciate your call. This is your program today, folks, your chance to share your thoughts, making brief and to the point. Jeff in Appleton, Wisconsin. Jeff, what do you say? Yeah, just a couple things. Um, the, the term Governor Romney means he has governed a state. He has led a state for a number of years, and, you know, Unfortunately, Obama, I'm not sure what he's ever led or where he's ever worked because he's so he's so secretive. And then just a quick note, if, if Vic, let's say you and I are debating on a subject, and you know the subject really well, and you're well-versed in it, and I don't know the subject very well, and I'm kind of, I was kind of lazy and didn't do my homework, you would just, I guess this term would say, bury me. And, and you know, to, to just Barack Obama has never governed. He's never never led anything. I don't, I don't know if he's ever had a business. And uh, he's great with a teleprompter, but when you speak to about, with somebody about things that they've done, you're going to be <laughs> you're going to be giving up a lot of ground. And another quick statement is, this is an amazing thing. In 2007, I was at a friend's house, and he had a big screen TV on behind him, and we were talking. I just looked over his shoulder, and the sound was off. 
And I saw a man who I'd never seen before, didn't know what he was talking about, and I said, that man's lying. And he's like, well, what are you talking about? I said, that guy, I don't know who he is. And a month later, I saw a book with his picture on it, you know, uh, The Life of My Father or something like that. And I, I don't think Barack Obama can tell the truth. And just It's just an observation. Before I got saved, I was the chief of liars. So I, I can I can see a liar very very clearly, and he is a liar. Thank you, sir, for your call. That's Jeff from Appleton, Wisconsin. We're going to go now to uh, Erlen in Ripon, Wisconsin, and uh, Erlen, you're on the air. Uh, this is Ireland from uh, Ireland. Ripon. I'm sorry, the spelling was uh, yeah, that's okay. on the screen. I, uh, fuzzy. And th- thank you for the program. And I got two comments. I watched the. Uh, debate last night, Mm -hmm. and I thought Mr. Romney was very respectful of the president, and we need to keep that in mind, that he is the president, and uh, the Bible and Timothy commands us to pray for him. So we need to make sure people are doing that, even Mm -hmm. though they maybe don't like everything he does. And the second thing I wanted to do is, four years ago, I had grandchildren of two and four years old, and uh, I listened to a news program where the interviewer asked Mr. Romney, or Mr. Obama at that time, uh, what he thought about abortion. And he said, well, he doesn't really believe in abortion totally, but if his daughter was to make a mistake, and this is what really hit me, if his daughter was to make a mistake and get pregnant, he wouldn't want her burdened with a child. And I want to lay that on the heart of everybody that's undecided. Mm. Thank you, Arlen. Appreciate the call from Ripon, Wisconsin. And uh, keep the calls coming in, 800-733-9829. And uh, we have our next caller coming up here in just a moment. So uh, keep the calls coming through, and we'll be glad to put you on the air. Take time to uh, contact uh, your church. They may have what you call voter values guides. This doesn't tell you who to vote for, but it lets you know where each and every candidate stands on the issues. And uh, if you're in doubt... You can even contact Liberty Council. That's lc.org or uh, 800, uh, let's see, what is it, four seven? No, I better hold off on the number there. Uh, at any rate, uh, if you contact Liberty Council with lc.org, they can get you what they call voter values. It tells you what each person stands for and have made, made a public announcement of where they stand. Let's go to Barriga, Michigan, and talk with Randy. Randy, you're on the air. Yeah, hello, Vic. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, I just uh, wanted to say that, uh, um, well, I've been uh, read a couple books by a man whose name is Dr. John Coleman, who's uh, studied the uh, congressional globes and the congressional annals and the congressional records for uh, 31 years, I guess about 37,000 pages. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, one of the things that I've uh, r- realized myself, I think that's very important, is that we... Uh, uh, we all should know uh, <laughs> what's in our Constitution, what the laws of our land are, and our Bill of Rights. And because the uh, person we're voting for is uh, supposed to uphold that. And uh, if they don't know that, then they're not going to do that. <laughs> Thank you very much. Appreciate that from Barriga, Michigan. Randy, we've got to take a break and be back with our final segment here on Crosstalk. Your reaction to the debate last night. Toll free, 800-733-9829. For the Worldview Weekend Minute, I am Brandon House. Our website is worldviewweekend.com. Some within the word of faith, false teaching, proclaim that Jesus became a sinner on the cross. Some of them teach that Jesus had to spend time in hell because he became a sinner for us. Some teach that he had to become born again. Many take 2 Corinthians 5.21 out of context, where it says, For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us. We've been talking about this in our last couple commentaries. John MacArthur says, God made him to be sin. Well, what does that mean? That important phrase requires a careful understanding. It does not mean that Christ became a sinner. The above-mentioned verse, establishing his utter sinlessness unequivocally, rules out that possibility. As God in human flesh, he could not possibly have committed any sin or in any way violated God's law. It is equally unthinkable that God, whose eyes are too pure to prove of evil, would make anyone a sinner, let alone his only son.
And welcome back to Crosstalk, where we have the microphone and the phone open here for you to call in and share your thoughts on the presidential debate last night. What did you think? Uh, Everybody seems to be in favor of it. And, of course, I mean, we're not just trying to create controversy, but I know there are some folk who have varying uh, desires uh, to see how things go and uh, various reactions to the pontificating that goes on during an election. Let's go back to the phone lines right now, and we're going to go to Connie in Oak Creek, Wisconsin. And, uh, Connie, you are on the air. Hello, Connie. Hi. Hi, Vic. Hi. I just wanted to quickly say that um, I I watched the debates last night, Mm -hmm. and there's been a lot of talk on your show today about Mitt Mitt Romney being a businessman, and I'd like to respond quickly to the man that said we should be careful to what we ask for as far as Mitt Romney because he'll make cuts in the economy. I feel that as Christians, we should be more concerned about God's laws of abortion and homosexuality first. And that's what God is against. And we need to be very mindful of that before we worry about Mitt Romney being a businessman and making cuts, which this country needs anyway. And I thought the the debate was very good last night and that Mitt Romney was very professional and came out ahead. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Connie. From Oak Creek, Wisconsin, we go to Milwaukee and talk with Kathy. Kathy, you're on the air. Hi. Um, I just don't like to add, so it was nice to see the debate last night, to hear directly from the candidates. The mm-hmm. gentleman, I'm going to address the same thing that woman just did, gentleman that was upset about the cuts, um, and we might not like it. Government is not who we are to be looking for to our needs. I, I, also, I'm not so concerned about their performance as much as what they said and um, the direction they want to go. So it's basic knowledge that competition always does drive down costs and quality up. And also gives us a choice, so that doesn't really, um, and that's not just health care, that's in all areas of life. So uh, I, I thought um, it was good to see them uh, really articulate what, they, what direction they wanted to go in. So after the debate last night, I'll be voting for Romney. Okay. Kathy, thank you, thank you so much. Appreciate that. From Milwaukee, and we have still a minute or two left. You can get some quick ones in there if you'd like to call. That phone number is... Uh, Eight hundred seven three three nine eight two nine. We'll take your calls as they come in, and uh, right now we're going to go to Jean, who is in Wisconsin. And uh, Jean, you're on the air. Yes, um, mm-hmm. I wasn't. Oh my goodness. Um, the um, on the um, turn the ra- turn the radio completely down. Okay, Jean. Yes. Okay, go ahead. Mm-hmm. Uh, on the debate, um, I think um, Romney did very well. He has a habit of uh, saying things that uh, alarm me, and um, I think... Like uh, like what? Um, well, like I'm going to crack down on China. Well, he had no business saying that. You don't crack down on China. Why not? Uh, <laughs> you... you um, You should uh, regard all peoples of the world as um, uh, people who are created by God and uh, treat them as people created by God. I see. Uh, also, the uh, the other thing is that the seniors could just turn off their ears because it didn't apply to them. That is an insulting thing to say. Otherwise, um, now, I mean, he tends to say those things, but otherwise... He sounds pretty good. Who is this now? Uh, Romney. Oh, I see. Okay. But um, uh, he, when he says kind of goofy things like that, he worries me that he's not going to win. He's got to say things. Uh, like go- goofy things like what? Let's be specific. Uh, he sounds um, warlike. Uh, I see. Okay, well, Gene, we're really tight on time, and I need to get a couple more calls in. I appreciate your your thoughts. Howard in uh, Port Charlotte, Florida. Howard, you got about 30 seconds. Okay, brother. Well, I'm supporting Romney because he's the closest to my biblical values as a born-again believer, and I would like to leave the listeners with a quote by Obama that he just made at the U.N. recently. He said, The future does not belong to those who slander the prophet Muhammad. 
Oh, my goodness. He said that? Yeah. The future does not belong to those who slander the prophet Muhammad. So you believers listening, brothers and sisters, please understand what this uh, man's real spiritual condition is. Thank you, Howard. Appreciate your call. Got to move right on again quickly. Bill in Florida. We've got about 30 seconds. Bill, go ahead. I just want to say that uh, I'm not going to vote for either one because they're all going to tell you what you, you want to hear. And when they stop making the dollar sign their God, then I will vote for a candidate that, that votes for the people instead of these guys that worship the dollar sign. I see. Okay. Thank you, Bill. Appreciate your comments. And lastly, Carl in Lake Delton. You've got it, Carl. Go ahead. You know, <clears throat> neither one of those gentlemen, I believe, were a Christian. Um, but the whole thing is that, that um, none of us, listening to this program, we're born Christians, and we need to pray that the Holy Spirit of God would touch both of their hearts, that they might come to the Lord. And they might might be pro-Israel, as the book, uh, uh, As America Does to Israel, uh, Mm -hmm. boy, we we better watch our steps. You know, and and you've, you've said it so well, that the Holy Spirit of God can convict anyone. There have been people, terrible people, like the man who wrote Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound That Saved a Wretch Like Me. The guy was a, he trafficked in human beings. But God changed his heart. You're right on, and I'm so glad you said that, Carl, because that's probably the last thought we'll have on the air today, but you certainly touched on it and very well. Thank you. God bless you. Well, that's it. That's it for today. I want to thank you for joining us. Very interesting discussion. And again, we need to pray that the Spirit of God would penetrate and give, I mean, true wisdom if if a candidate who is a president learns to know Jesus Christ as Savior, and you can witness, there are people who have made decisions for Christ in various venues. There have been high-ranking people. I think of uh, well, a doctor many years ago who had, was in the abortion business, but ultimately God got through to him, and he became a Christian. And uh, there are others who God has changed their heart. But lots to pray about, don't we? And uh, thanks for joining us today. It was your program, your opportunity to speak on Crosstalk here on the VCY America Radio Network. Listening to Crosstalk via satellite and the internet from BCY America. Views expressed may or may not be those of this station. For a CD of today's program, send a donation of $6 or more to VCY Tape Ministry, 3434 West Kilbourne Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 53208. Or download by RSS or podcast from crosstalkamerica.com. And join us again for Crosstalk. Crosstalk.